Welcome to part five of how to play the bass clarinet. Uh, we're going to go over some musical terminology and uh, really important stuff. Make sure you learn these things. So the first thing we'll talk about is the staff. Uh, and that's, this is a staff. A staff is five lines and four spaces for used for writing music. Um, the lines are obvious. There's the lines. But the spaces are just that space in between the two lines. And the next thing is this red box here. It talks about the treble clef. Now throughout this book you'll notice that It'll have a red box with some information, and then they'll have a red highlighted section, which helps you know what they're talking about. So in this case, we're talking about the treble clef, also known as the G clef. It's called the G clef because this loop right here, this loop down here, loops around this second line. And so that means anytime there's a note on that second line, it's going to be called a G. Uh, then we have the time signature, this yellow box, uh, and then again highlighted down here. Uh, time signature tells us how many beats in a measure, which is the top number, in this case four beats in a measure, and what kind of note gets the beat, in this case the bottom number, which is a four, and that means that a quarter note, four fourths, fourths or quarters, a uh, quarter note would get the beat. So that's what that time signature is telling us. Uh, the bar lines, these blue sections, divides this staff, which is the five lines and four spaces used for writing music, uh, into measures. So it divides up the staff into these little sections as you see here are called measures which is the distance between two bar lines. And then we have a double bar line. It's the end of a section of music um, and it, if it's a dark bar, double bar line like this dark one here that means it's like pretty much the end of the music. Sometimes it's just a single, two single uh, bars and that just means it's the end of a section. Next we have the musical alphabet and it says here the musical alphabet uh, uses only the letters A through G and they're used to name the notes on the staff in line space, line space order. A, B, C, D, E, F, G and so forth. And then it repeats over and over again as for as many notes as we have. Um, as you see down here this note here is an A and then it would go in order A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then start over with A again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and there's A again, and it would go again, A, B, C, and so forth, okay? So, as long as you remember, the treble clef um, circles that second line, which is that, which means that second line is a G, then you can remember all the names of the notes because it goes in order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and repeats. So, G, the space here would be A, then you have the B, then the C, then the D, E, F, right? Now, a lot of times in music we teach about the, just the spaces and then the lines. And that's another way to learn it too. I find it easier just to remember the alphabet A through G. But if you remember F, A, C, E, those are the names of the notes in the spaces. So face in the space. That's fine. Or if you remember every good boy deserves fudge, E, G, B, D, F. Or every good boy does fine. Or Elvis's guitar broke down Friday. Or whatever. There's lots of them. Um, that's fine too if that helps you remember the names of the lines and the spaces. Um, but sometimes that doesn't help us remember the ones above and below, right, which are used on ledger lines. Um, ledger lines used to extend the staff. So once we extend the staff higher, like this note even above the staff or this note below the staff, you might not know if you only know F, A, C, E, or G, E, G, B, D, F. So it's nice to know that they just go in alphabetical order. So the next one up is the next one in the alphabet. Um, the ledger lines, as you see here, is just a line that extends the staff. So like here, technically, there are seven lines of the staff when really um, there's only five. We, we, we only use ledger lines where they're needed because otherwise the staff would get full of lots and lots of lines. So we don't need that many lines normally. So make sure you understand those musical terms. We'll use that a lot in band. We, we like to speak musically. Um, if, if you don't know the name of a note, uh, it's really hard to ask how to play that note. For example, if I'm on the podium and you're clear in the band room and you raise your hand and say, Mr. Garner, I don't know this note here. And I say, which note? And you don't know how to describe it. That makes it a little hard to work together. So, But if instead you said, hey, Mr. Garner, this 25th measure of the G, I don't know how to play that note. Well, I can find it on my music. I can explain it to you. We can we can speak musically in a way that helps us learn um, learn our music. So make sure you understand all the things we covered. You're not going to know it instantly, and that's fine. But just re refer back to that page. It's page five in the book, and um, and it'll help you a lot. Uh, the next thing we're talking about is some practice tips. Um, just some quick things to help you get started. 
And the number one thing is make sure that you have a space in which you can practice that you're not gonna get disturbed all the time. It's really hard to keep practicing when people interrupt you a lot. Um, it's just like doing your homework or doing anything else. If you get interrupted all the time, it makes it harder to get it done. So find a place. A lot of my students find their bedroom or, or maybe the back patio or the garage. I have some parents who always use their, some parents, some students who always use their parents' room because it's a quieter place in the house and, and they're able to go there and practice and without getting disturbed. Wherever it is is fine as long as you can do that. Um, one option is the, it may be the band room, depending uh, on this time of day, but, but sometimes you can practice in the band room after school um, for 20, 30 minutes and then put it away and go home. And that's a great, that's a great option too. So find, find a space to practice. Um, another thing to always do is make sure that you are practicing things that you need to get better at. Okay, whether there is, maybe you know it a little bit, but you want to improve, or maybe you don't know it at all, and you want to understand and, and, and figure out how to do it. Those are the things you should be practicing. Typically, kids tend to practice things they already know how to do well because they want somebody to hear them or it's just the easier part. So that's fun to do from time to time, but mostly you want to practice things that you need to work on, things that you need to improve. Um, and lastly, you might find it helpful to practice with the CD that comes along with the book. Um, some books, uh, some of the more modern books are actually coming with just a link to an online uh, listening. And so either way, it helps to practice along with that. It makes it a little bit more fun. Um, there's more accompaniment, more people playing, and you, and you might have more fun playing that way. So try that out. Well, join us on our next video. It'd be part six. And uh, we'll uh, learn some new things on how to play the clarinet. We'll see you then.